which AMS system is actually worth it for your shop. Today, we're gonna to break down the AMS OG, the AMS 2 Pro, and the new AMS HT so that you can make the smartest decision for your setup. Now, for full transparency, I do personally own all three of these AMSs, and I paid for each of them myself. So everything I'm sharing today comes directly from my hands-on experiences. I also will not be comparing the AMS Lite because I do not personally own one to test. If you're brand new to 3D printing, you may be wondering what even is an AMS and is it worth investing in? AMS stands for Automatic Material System and it's Bamboo Labs name for their auto feeding filament system. Other companies offer similar systems with different acronyms like Prusa's MMU or Multi-Material Upgrade or Creality's CFS, Continuous Filament System. After doing hundreds of manual filament swaps myself, I can tell you personally, it gets frustrating. You waste time, you get into awkward positions, especially if you're working in a small shop or print farm. AMS systems automate filament loading, unloading, and swapping. And they also offer multi-material and multicolor printing, which would be otherwise very tedious to manage manually. Now that we've covered the basics, let's jump straight into my personal pros and cons for each system. How about we start off with the OG, the original, AMS by Bamboo Labs. It's currently priced at $319 and it offers decent humidity protection. It's got tons of desiccant storage areas so you know you can keep your filament really dry. It can hold up to four spools at a time. And let's not forget that it was the first AMS solution for consumers, or at least the first that I'm aware of, that was consistent and reliable. So we've got to give it props for that. And this system is also fully compatible with all current Bamboo printers, which is really nice. Now, how about we talk about some of my cons? So this system definitely is not quick to feed filament into the printer head. There is no built-in drying. It's only passive desiccant drying. And let me tell you, maintenance is not fun with this AMS. Gosh, anytime you have an AMS breakage or, you know, a clog or something inside of the PTFE tubes, it is just a nightmare to take apart. And, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times I've taken this AMS apart. And I'm at the point now where I just don't even install the screws anymore because when I have to go into the system, I just like to be able to take that shell out, quickly disconnect the two cables, you know, fix my issue and put it back together. It is such a pain. So that is a huge downside of this machine. The PTFE release is also on the inside as well, so you have to take out all the spools in order to pull the PTFE tube out of the back of the AMS. I do realize that you probably could hook up a coupler on the back uh, of the AMS so you can quickly disconnect from a coupler basically, but I haven't done that yet. And I'm kind of sad I didn't think of that until right now. It also has limited filament compatibility. TPU can't be fed through it, at least most TPUs, and some abrasive filaments as well. I would also argue that its current price at $319 is total overkill. I think it would be a much fairer price around $200 to maybe $250 at the most. And then for us H2D owners, it can only feed one nozzle or one port, which you know isn't a huge downside, but it's definitely something to mention. Now, how about we talk about the new AMS2 Pro? It's currently priced at $359 on Bamboo's website. And with this new brushless servo motor, it offers 60% faster feeding. This is definitely huge. I've noticed it significantly. As soon as I started using the new AMS, I instantly knew that it fed much faster. And over, I think 100 hours, they say it can save up to around 10 minutes, which you know isn't a huge deal, but for people who are running print farms and want to have the most efficient printing as possible or jobs as possible, this definitely might be something that makes you get the AMS2 Pro. Another huge benefit of the new AMS is the 65C drying that it has. So it's actually actively dried or actively heated, I should say, and it's awesome. It's awesome that they added this functionality to the AMSs. I feel like it was the one feature the original AMS was lacking that we all wanted, and they did add it, and it works very, very well. It's pretty cool. The RFID tags that are on Bamboo's filament also stores the drying settings for each filament type. So if you use bamboo filaments, you know, the printer will know exactly what drying settings it needs to use based off of those RFID tags. They also significantly improved the interior design of the AMS and you can now access all of the filament tubes just right there in the open so you don't have to take anything apart. And it's much more convenient to fix a clog or a broken piece of filament inside of a tube and I love that. Also, the PTFE release port is now on the back of the AMS on the outside. So you don't have to take your spools out to get your fingers back there. You can just leave your spools inside, 
push the button on the back of the AMS and then just pull the tube straight out. And I absolutely love that small detail. They also added ceramic filament inlets, which is really nice to see. So they should last a lot longer than the originals. They also added functionality for auto rotating when your spool is inside the AMS and it's drying. You just have to make sure that your filament is not inside of the port and it'll rotate your filament to make sure that all sides of the spool are getting dried, which I think is a really cool feature. And it also has a good amount of desiccant storage, just like the original as well. Another nice thing about this AMS is it can dry filament just on the printer's power. I'm not sure if that's for every printer, but definitely for the H2D, if you only have one unit hooked up. And because of the RFID tags in the filament, if you're using bamboo's filament, it can also detect how much filament is remaining, which I think is a super cool feature. So how about the cons with the new AMS 2 Pro? Well, since it only gets to 65C on the inside for drying, it can't dry all filaments. PVA and carbon fiber filled filaments might not get fully dry if you put them inside of the AMS2 Pro because of that limited max temperature. It also only feeds one nozzle or extruder, which for H2D owners might be a letdown or a bummer. You still do also have to remove the filament spools to access the PTFE tubes, even though they are you know, much more accessible than the original. You don't have to take any screws out. You don't have to unplug any cables, which is really nice, but you still have to remove those filament rolls. It also has limited filament compatibility, just like the original AMS. So most TPUs and some abrasive filaments will not be compatible. You also cannot dry your filaments while you're printing, which really sucks. To be honest with you, for filaments like PVA that are super moisture sensitive, it would be really nice to have that thing running while doing a print. It is also not currently compatible with A-series printers. They are going to release that compatibility later on in the year. I think Q3 of 2025 is their expectation. That's definitely a bummer for A-series users at the moment. Bamboo also doesn't include the external power supply if you want to run more than one AMS2 Pro on the same printer like I have set up on my H2D. So you're going to have to buy those external power supplies separate. I also think it's really interesting that at the current price point for $359, that's only about $50 cheaper than buying a new A1 printer. So kind of begs the question, do you want to get an AMS or do you want to get another printer? I guess it depends on what's more important to you. I also do want to mention that they cannot be used as standalone dryers and they do require a printer connection, a bamboo printer connection to be used in that way. Now, how about we jump to the AMS HT number three on my list. It's currently selling for $159 US and it also boasts the same new brushless servo motors and 60% faster filament feeding. Instead of 65 degrees, the AMS HT actually goes to 85 degrees so that you can dry those high temp materials like PVA and carbon fiber filled filaments to make sure that there is no moisture left before starting a print. I also personally noticed that because of the AMS HT's volume and its one spool capacity, it heats very quickly, so it's very efficient at drying. Just like the AMS2 Pro, it has automatic venting, which is really nice to make sure that it can let humid air out and pull cool, fresh air in, which is super sweet. This AMS also has a cool bypass outlet so that you can use the drying functionality with non-AMS compatible filaments like TPU or carbon-filled filaments. Now that I think about it, you could just drill holes in your other AMSs and add your own ports and kind of do the same thing that the AMS HT does. So if you want to do that, or if any one of you has already done that, I'd love to see the results and tell me if you think that that's something that I should do maybe to test out as an improvement for our AMSs. It also is very compact and small with that one spool capacity. So if you've got a tight shop situation, it might be a good AMS to go for. It can also auto rotate your filament while it's drying. It has RFID sensing the same way the AMS2 Pro does and can calculate how much filament is left based on those tags. And it has the same new ceramic inlet ports as the AMS2 Pro. One thing that it does have different is a digital display directly on the front of the printer so that you can see your humidity readout, your temperature readout, and your time readout to see how much time left you have for your drying. The LED displays are very clean, very crisp, and it's easy to see from a long way away. So if you do have a big print farm, it might be a really nice feature to have. Another thing that it has different from the AMS2 Pro is for maintenance, it's actually accessible on the outside of the AMS. On the underside, there are two screws that you remove and you can access the PTFE port, which I think is pretty sweet. So you could technically leave your spool of filament on the inside, keeping it dry, 
while you perform your maintenance. Another thing I really like about the AMS HT is it actually includes the power supply cable for the drying functionality. Unlike the AMS2 Pro, you do not have to buy this separate. So that's a pretty sweet difference between the two of them. Now for the cons. First off, it only fits one spool. So if you're looking to dry or store multiple spools of filament, you will not get that with the AMS HT. Just like the AMS2 Pro, you also cannot dry while printing. It is also not compatible with A-series printers at the moment and hopefully will be compatible in Q3 of 2025, just like the AMS2 Pro. Another letdown with the AMS HT is there's hardly any desiccant storage on the inside of the AMS, but you can get around that with a center spool desiccant holder, like the ones that I use and the ones I've designed. It does require that external power supply cable, even if you're running a single unit because the printer does not have the power to heat up this system. There is also no standalone drying feature just like the AMS2 Pro, so it does require a printer connection for that functionality. Now I do want to talk about the common pros and cons for all of the AMS units that Bamboo offers, so let's get right into it. One of the things I love most about the Bamboo AMSs is that they are very well integrated with Bamboo machines. Controlling them is super clean, it's super easy. Using touchscreens on X1 Carbons and HGD is just an amazing experience overall, and I think Bamboo has really nailed it in this aspect. So far in my experience, they're also extremely reliable. I will say that the original AMS, when something breaks off inside of your PTFE tubes, it is a pain to get in there and pull that filament out. But other than that, they feed very reliably, they're very consistent, and I have had hardly any failures with my AMSs in the time that I've owned them. I also think it's really cool that Bamboo has that ecosystem with their filaments and with RFID tags so that when you use their filaments in their AMSs, the printer knows what filament it is and knows the drying settings. I think that that's a really cool integration and it makes it seem very seamless to use this system. The AMSs also have filament runout, backup, and tangle detection, which I think is super sweet and can save you tons of headache if you have an issue or an error with your AMSs. I really also love that you can expand the system and use multiple AMSs with your printers so that you can really get the best experience with multicolor and multi-material printing. Now for common cons, I don't have many, but my first one is these AMSs are only compatible with bamboo printers, which kind of is a downside, kind of isn't. I guess it depends on how you feel about bamboo. So for those of you who don't own bamboo printers, you unfortunately cannot take advantage of their awesome AMS systems. There's also limited software control because we're talking about bamboo and all of the limitations that they set on their printers like printing while drying and stuff like that generally speaking, is not user controllable. And it's definitely something that I wanna mention when talking about Bamboo Labs. So what is my take? Well, if I had to pick one AMS, it easily goes to the AMS2 Pro. I definitely think it's the best value for most users. You get faster feeding, drying, a better design, and much easier maintenance for only $40 more than the original OG AMS at current US prices. When would I recommend the other AMSs? Well, it's really hard to recommend the OG AMS because of the small $40 difference between the AMS2 Pro and the AMS OG. But for those of you who think $40 is a lot of money, I would say that the AMS OG is a good AMS system overall. It just has some quirks and it's definitely not the best designed AMS, especially now with AMS2 Pro out. So I guess if you wanna say $40, go for the AMS OG. If you already own an AMS OG, I mean, it's definitely nice to have a multi-material system, but I wouldn't recommend buying one at current prices. If they lower the price of the AMS OG down to around, I don't know, $249, maybe $200, then maybe it would be a solid purchase. And when would I recommend the AMS HT? Well, for users who like to use high temp filaments, such as PVA, carbon fiber filled filaments, or maybe nylon users, filaments along those lines. I think that that could be a really cool AMS to use because of its high temperature heating. What is my ultimate recommendation? For serious shops, I'd recommend getting the AMS2 Pro and the AMS HD together so that you get the best of both worlds. If you found this video helpful or if you learned anything or if it helped you make a better decision when buying an AMS, please consider hitting the like button, commenting, subscribing, and don't forget to hit the bell notification icon so that you know when my next video drops. If you'd like to support me and my channel, and if you wanna see more content in the future, I'd really appreciate it if you supported me by checking out my Etsy shop, my website, or clicking my affiliate link 
in the description below. All right, this has been Sam with Muxlow Makes. Thank you so much for watching.